Ever since I learned about medians, I've been obsessed with the symmetries of the world. And I don't mean symmetry like perfect numbers or perfect measurements. I mean symmetry timeline. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but let me explain. There is a stella in the archaeological site of Isapa of a man with extended arms that, according to some research, represents the beliefs of Mayan of having repeated events that undergo an evolution in the middle point just like a number line with a zero in the middle. Some examples of that can be brick phones that at some point years ago came back in the form of tablets. There was an evident change. They were smarter, they were lighter, but we still had the event of people putting huge phones on their ears. When I started having interest in Asia and Korean culture, I immersed myself in many cultural aspects that were not as easily portrayed in K-dramas because I genuinely wanted to get to know the real culture of Korea. And as I dived deeper and deeper into that, I found some resemblances with the Mexican culture that at first thought were just coincidences because of the immigration flow, but they came to be aspects of both cultures that were actually similar. So I wanted to know how symmetrical this correlation could be, and this is what I found. I'm going to start with Chaudhye and the other one. Chaudhye is a memorial service for one's ancestors that is performed during Solon, Chuseok, and other traditional Korean holidays. It is a form of ancestral worship and an expression of gratitude to one's ancestors. So that's basically the definition that we have from the National Folk of what? The National Folk Museum of Korea. <laughs> and if we go to the website of Mexican government, we have that it says that it's actually a memorial and ritual celebration that privileges remembering over forgetting. This one actually is only performed once a year, this uh, different from Chari. But there are like many similarities when it comes to like the meaning that they have behind and also the way that it is performed. We can see mostly the resemblance in the use of shrines with food. Like they offer food, we offer food to our ancestors in Mexico, we believe that actually ancestors will come on that particular night and they will eat. And there has been, uh, ex I have I, th I have had experiences where like, you put a piece of bread or from my grandpa, they once put a cigarette and it was like, it, it looked like someone had, a, uh, had like uh, taken it with his fingers like this. And like those are the kind of experiences that people usually expect to see when they put the offerings for the other mortals. I'm not sure exactly uh, with um, Charie. I think that somehow Charie seems a little more formal, but it's probably because I haven't been in there. I have heard a lot about it and I have read a lot about it. But in general, in Mexico, it looks like it's more like a party, like it's something that we are. Sometimes I feel like it's not taken that seriously as it should because you play games and things like that. In Korea, you see that there's like more sense of ownership uh, towards that. Even though like both of them are trying to honor the ancestors, I don't know, I, I just think it's a little different in that sense. And also in both celebrations, we can see another similarity, it's not necessarily just the shrine. We can see activities like the cleaning of the resting place or tombs that happens during that day or that celebration visiting and leaving flowers which is uh, maybe maybe that one doesn't count as much because it's something that we usually do when when we have um someone who passed away but it happens during that celebration so i just wanted to mention it because of that and also the worship that occurs in korea we see like this ceremony uh, that is like a little more uh, like i said more religious more honoring and in Mexico, we see this form of a party that literally, um, sometimes they actually have some services, memorial services in churches, and sometimes there are preachers going to the grave places to perform the religious services, but in general, in Mexico, it's a little more like a party. I think the, the thing I was most shocked about was just like the offering, because that's what, that's something that we get to do that another country does literally similar and at least in Mexico it's a little more flexible uh, than it is in Korea. I think in Korea they have like certain foods that they use for those celebrations and for those offerings while in Mexico it's mostly like we have some foods that are especially used, some flowers even, uh, that are especially used for the offerings but 
we are a little more flexible in the sense of putting the food that we know that the deceased people or the deceased person used to like, things that they used to drink, things that they used to consume in general. So that's a little different difference within the similarity that usually happens. And, and that's what I, why, I, why I was mentioning the evolution point before. Because in this sense, we cannot really say that there was an evolution in a timeline because we're talking about two different cultures, two different countries. But there is a, obviously a, a point of evolution or a point of difference in them. Lucero Castillo from the Chongnam University is actually doing more in-depth research about that. I will leave the link of the talk that she gave at the Korean Culture Center in Mexico in the description so you can check it out. Another similarity is the use of masks. And I don't mean moisturizing masks. Traditional Korean masks gained some popularity due to the Netflix show's Money Heist, where the thieves were using the masks to hide their identities. And there were like many articles coming out about that. In general, for what I have seen, there are different types of masks, different types of uses for them. Like a certain kind of mask usually represents um, like a character and it's usually used for a certain type of ceremony or for a certain type of dance. They're made out of wood. They used to be more ritual, but I think like more ritual, more religious, but that, now they're a little more into performances because of the wheel of expanding the knowing of Korean culture. Um, but in general, that's like, that's it. That's, that's what I've read in general for, for, for them. Like they're part of a folklore, they're trying to tell story, they used to have like this religious or ritual meaning. And in Mexico we have actually something similar. I grew in the south of Mexico, and in the south of Mexico there is a certain state that has a tradition called Los Parachicos. So Los Parachicos is actually, it's not the name of the ceremony, is actually the name of the characters. So parachicos are basically dancers that are going to perform this particular dance at a particular time of the year to worship saints. And just like with Korean masks, they are made of wood. They are also made to represent a particular character, which in this case is a parachico. So every person who has that kind of mask is going to be one parachico. And in general, they all dance together, so they are in plural Los Parachicos. And I mean, the similarities I saw in both, besides the use of mask and the material of the mask, is like also the meaning behind of that um, tradition or that ritual, that they are both rituals, that they are both trying to worship uh, and they have some sort of uh, religious connotation. In general, I think it's also very interesting, something that can be such peculiar can also like be compared or be shared between two cultures. There is another one that may not be the best one, but I also wanted to mention it, which is the use of herbs in a form of alternative medicine. In Korea, we have traditional Korean medicine, which um, originally came and changed from traditional Chinese medicine. And it had to be changed because it had to adapt to both the availability of um, herbs roots and, and also the needs of the, of the Korean society. It also focuses on the reestablishing of a person's energy within their body. And in Mexico, we have Herbolaria Mexicana, which basically dates back from time before the Spanish colonization, in which illnesses were considered a punishment of the gods. It is more prevalent now in indigenous communities because it mostly depends on generation learning to stay alive. Although a big percentage of the Mexican population knows at least the basic of it and have, has used it at least once in their life. Both of them are specific to that particular society, that particular culture, that particular place. And both of them are actually recognized as intangible cultural heritages. So um, that's also another thing <laughs> that I found really interesting that maybe, like I said, maybe not, might not be the best example because there are other countries who also use herbs for that. But I also find it particular that we both have it. And lastly, we cannot forget to mention the love for spicy food in both cultures that is often compared in food challenges. And I mean, we can talk a lot about this, 
but I would like to make a first comparison in the love for cocho chili in Korea and jalapenos in Mexico. Both of them come from the same family and the same genre, which is capsicum, which means they both produce capsaicin, which is the compound that makes our mouths and our tongues burn. We already know that Mexican food tends to be a lot spicier, but one thing that I found through my own experience is that the way they burn actually has a variation. I have an allergy to uh, some of Mexican chilies, especially jalapeno, and if I consume it or, eat or taste it by accident, I feel like a burning sensation not only in the area that touch it, but also coming down to my throat, which doesn't happen with cocho chili. Like, cocho chili doesn't even irritate my mouth. And besides being unable to eat most of Mexican chilies, because it literally just make me choke, <laughs> I have been able to eat Bulzac in the past, like the spicy type, and I didn't have any kind of reaction. I didn't feel like that burning sensation in my throat. And like the most thing that I felt was like a numbing sensation in all my mouth. And it stayed like that. Like it stayed from here until the part where my tongue finishes. And I actually found that pretty cool because at the, in the past I thought that maybe I was allergic to capsaicin, but I'm able to eat gochujang and many derivates of gochu chili with no much issue. So what things do your country share with Korea? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you soon.